Hello, everyone, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to today's webinar uh, on secure and continuous services. We're going to be talking about Huawei's anti-DDoS solution, and we specifically picked this topic for this week because this is the week of the RSA conference up at the Moscone Center in San Francisco, and uh, Huawei has a, a big booth there, and there's a lot going on uh, about security. Um, before we get started, I just want to mention a few housekeeping items. First of all, uh, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to uh, spend an hour with us. Uh, probably be a little bit less than an hour today, I would think. Uh, but thank you for taking the time. Uh, and as always, we're going to give everyone uh, who spends time on the webinar today uh, a $10 Starbucks gift card as a small token of our appreciation for you uh, investing some time in us today. Um, also, as we usually do, we're going to have polling questions. So throughout the webinar, uh, we'll ask some questions of you, and we'll share the results with everyone in attendance. So please take a moment to respond to those polling questions. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please use your uh, Q&A panel on the GoToWebinar interface to type in your questions, and we'll answer those as best we can throughout the uh, presentation, uh, as well as we'll take uh, a number of them at the end uh, if we have time. Uh, and then finally, uh, working with me today, uh, is going to be Rick Q from our product marketing organization. Uh, he's going to be doing the majority of the presentation. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Huawei's position in the marketplace before we dive into the details of the DDoS solution. Uh, and what we really want to think about is Huawei being in this perfect storm of IT and communications technology colliding. And this has been happening over the last 50 years. Uh, and as we end up where we are today, you really have a convergence of mobility. Uh, the BYOD movement is in full swing. People want to use their own devices. They want to be able to use tablet computers, whatever it is that they like to use in the office. Uh, and the company needs to be able to accommodate that and support the applications on those devices, as well as dealing with cloud-based applications uh, and, and just everything that's going on with the convergence of communications technology and IT technology. So, the good news for Huawei is we've been positioning ourselves to capitalize on this convergence for a number of years, uh, and we believe we are best positioned overall in the market today, uh, globally, and, and certainly in the U.S. Um, next thing I want to talk a little bit about is just the company itself. Uh, if you're not familiar with Huawei, uh, we are a massive company, uh, just coming up to $40 billion in revenue last year, uh, and this is you know, worldwide global revenue. But $40 billion company is, is certainly a very large, uh, significant player. Uh, we have over 150,000 employees, 70,000 of which are in the R&D group. Uh, so we have more uh, engineers than, for example, Cisco has total employees. So this is a powerhouse of a company. Uh, we have uh, R&D centers spread all across the globe. I'll talk in a minute about uh, where some of the specific R&D centers are in the United States. Um, in terms of the big global telcos, we are providing uh, infrastructure to 45 of the world's top 50 telcos. We're deployed in over 140 uh, countries globally. So obviously just a very significant player, and I think in, in some ways we're the best kept secret in the U.S. Uh, for people that still aren't that familiar with us. Um, our, our initial office that we established is in Plano, Texas, uh, and we've been spending billions of dollars with U.S.-based companies uh, that we're collaborating with uh, across the United States. So we're a huge investor uh, in terms of U.S. market and U.S. economy. Uh, and we have major offices from an R&D perspective in Santa Clara, California, as well as Plano. We have regional sales offices spread all across the country. Uh, and kind of our enterprise, uh, Huawei Enterprise U.S. headquarters is based in Cupertino, California. Uh, in case you wonder where the enterprise group fits, there's really three major divisions within Huawei. There's the carrier group. Uh, there's the device group that makes the tablets and smartphones, but we're the group in the middle. We're the enterprise group that's really focusing on data center solutions, campus solutions, uh, and various other solutions for the IT infrastructure space. So the final thing I want to cover uh, is really just a little bit about kind of the highlights. What's the value proposition of Huawei? Well, I've already mentioned that we're in almost every of the major, all the major carriers globally, um, but the real important thing for us is that we're partnering with lots of different companies, uh, and we have interoperability, I think Rick will talk, talk more about that, but uh, we were part of the interoperability lab uh, at Interop, and we really were able to show our products coexisting and thriving uh, with products with, uh, from other vendors. Uh, we have a significant in investment in patents and also in standards committees. Uh, so Huawei is really one of these companies that builds from within as opposed to just doing acquisitions all over the place. Uh, and this leads to our ability to file uh, the number of patents that we do. We have almost 40,000 patents uh, globally, uh, and we also do have a significant 
investment in the standards committees. So if you look at all the various standards committees, Huawei uh, is really driving open standards along in, in collaboration with all of our other partners that we work with. Um, and then, you know, in the Gartner Magic Quadrant, we keep working our way up. Right now, we're, we're very strong in the ability to execute, uh, as you would expect, with a company that has uh, 70,000 engineers. Um, so that's just a little bit about the company from an overview perspective. Okay, so as we go forward here, uh, the last slide I want to uh, mention before we go to the first polling question is just setting the stage for what we're talking about today. Uh, so if you look at Huawei Enterprise, we have three major areas that we focus in. The first is UCNC. Uh, which is all of our telepresence and video conferencing solutions. Many of you might be familiar with our TE30 product that gets a lot of uh, air cover. Um, the middle section there is really our campus and branch solutions. This is a whole portfolio of switching and routing products, uh, as well as our wireless portfolios. Uh, and then down at the data center level, we have a full complement of storage and servers and our high-end data center switching, our top of rack switches, et cetera. From a software perspective, our unified management platform is our eSight solution, and today we'll be focusing on our security solution, so you'll be able to get an insight into that. Uh, and then from a vertical perspective, we focus on large enterprise data center solutions. We have a big presence in retail uh, and also higher education as well as K-12 through education and manufacturing companies. So kind of a standard type of uh, vertical focus that you'll see in a lot of companies. Uh, we also do a lot with the media and entertainment group. Uh, and we do a lot of work down in Southern California around that industry in particular. Um, so today's uh, webinar is really focused on the security area, but I just wanted to set the stage across the various uh, different verticals that Huawei focuses on as well as the different product areas that we're, where we have uh, strong technology. So with that, let's go ahead and go to the first polling question. So the first polling question is going to be, uh, what is the most significant operational threat facing your business or your customers if you're a VAR? Um, and what we really want you to do there is go ahead and vote. So um, is, the, is the biggest operational threat, is it DDoS attacks towards your customers or your infrastructure? Uh, is it infrastructure outages due to failure or misconfiguration? Uh, is it having bots or compromised hosts on your network? Uh, are you most concerned about new vulnerabilities or zero-day exploits, or is it something altogether different? So. Uh, go ahead and vote. We'll give you a, a few seconds to, to vote, and then we'll show everybody the results. Uh, remember earlier, as I mentioned, that we definitely want you to keep your questions coming. Uh, so if you have questions, uh, type them into the Q&A panel on your GoToWebinar interface, uh, and we'll be answering those as we go along. Um, go ahead. We'll give you just a few more seconds to vote, and then we'll see what all of you guys think. We'll share the results with everybody in the audience. All right, let's go ahead and close it out. And as we share it, what you can see is that probably the single biggest, almost half of you feel like the biggest operational threat is infrastructure outages due to failure or misconfiguration. Uh, fairly significant balance between DDoS attacks uh, on your customers or your infrastructure, as well as the uh, new vulnerabilities that you sometimes can't be uh, prepared for. Uh, and then uh, also there's a little bit of uh, recognition with the botted or compromised hosts. So that's great input. That'll help Rick as he goes ahead. Um, so what we're going to do now is go ahead, and I'd like to turn it over now to Rick Q uh, from Huawei's product marketing department, and he's going to take us through uh, the center part of the uh, presentation. Rick, go ahead. Well, thank you, Nick, as always, for the great introduction. Um, so what we're talking about today are, uh, are DDoS attacks and um, Huawei solutions around addressing on those DDoS attacks and our anti-DDoS solution. So, so before we dive in, just give you a quick little playback about some various uh, DDoS attacks and trends um, in security over the last couple of years. And what we've seen in recent years is that DDoS attacks um, have grown in size. Um, where we've seen more uh, 40 gigabits or larger DDoS attacks emerging and services were interrupted not only for, for hours, but sometimes um, days, which we've seen. Um, and then one that I just we've pointed out, the Sukumi attack on uh, individual users within social media. These were targeted attacks, uh, something that we hadn't seen up until that point, which is um, targeting specific individuals and um, application layers. Um, we've also seen some other attacks that have just increased in size and scale over the years, as with everything with the increase of computing power and, and bandwidth. So these, the, 
what we're what we're showing here on this slide is the increase in traffic. Um, you can see just in the last few years. Um, last year specifically, we've seen DDoS attacks of 300 gigabits or more, um, and in the the, the diversity of attacks, um, they've moved away from just simply traffic-based uh, attacks of denial of service and just overloading bandwidth to more uh, targeted application layer attacks. So they're getting smarter. And, uh, and we've seen recently, for example, with the uh, recent attacks on Bitcoin exchanges, you know, they've basically exploited some various glitches in the system, creating, you know, uh, fake uh, services that resemble the real one. So even with existing anti DDoS appliances, they weren't able to differentiate uh, the real from the the fake services. And what that what that does is uh, someone just stepped in here into our webinar. Can you close that door? Sorry about that. Uh, so we've seen is that they're getting smarter. And, and the existing anti-DDoS solutions aren't able to adapt fast enough to recognize the real from the, the, the fake attacks or the fake transactions. So just to kind of uh, recap on the trends, you know, we're seeing massive disruption. The largest attack traffic volume from uh, 2012 to 2003 has increased and triple in size. The average attack bandwidth has, uh, has increased 6x. And the number of large attacks, and by large attacks we mean um, those exceeding 20 gigabits, have increased eightfold. Also in 2013, um, we've seen an increase of 250 LTE commercial use networks. So these are private LTE networks for, mo for mobility, an increase of 46% of smart terminals. And then also a lot of uh, mobile attack tools that users are, are getting access to. So these are getting smarter and more sophisticated. Um, and, it's, and it's costing a lot of uh, uh, a, a huge increase in cost, both in security and infrastructure and downtime. We're also seeing more app-based attacks. So last year, there was a 42% uh, growth in app attacks and, and the combinations of uh, HTTP and, and app attacks. And then we're also seeing uh, the tremendous growth of attacks originate from Internet data centers. So data center servers are being taken over and hijacked, and with their huge resources and bandwidth, um, we're seeing a majority of the large attacks coming and originating from, from data, cent data centers. So, so what do you do in this wake of more attacks, more frequent attacks, faster attacks, and, and, and larger um, attacks? So, some of the requirements to be considered a next generation anti-DDoS solution is one, you have to be able to address the very large attacks, um, just in case for your enterprise infrastructure, because those, those large attacks cause huge disruption and, and huge downtime. And you have to be able to address mobility issues. So for mobile terminals and for mobile devices, you need to be able to protect all users within in your infrastructure and your organization. And you have to be able to tag them not just from you know, purely a, a traffic uh, uh, port level, but on the application layer. The, your your anti-DDoS attack solution must be smarter and be able to adapt and process the information quickly um, to, to, to handle all these newer, smarter, and more application-targeted um, attacks. And then you have to have an anti-outbound DDoS solution that blocks the attack tool from controlling various commands coming in and out. And this really satisfies a lot of the compliance requirements uh, for, for proactive defense. So these are kind of the four key pillars for a next generation anti-DDoS um, solution. So I think this leads into Excellent. the second polling question. Excellent. Thanks, Rick. That's, uh, that really sets the stage kind of a little scary uh, when you think about all this. So we talked a little bit about what you, what you felt the most significant operational threats were. Now what we'd like to do is figure out how you're dealing with this today. So what tools are you currently using uh, to classify and trace back uh, DDoS attacks? And uh, is it commercial or open source NetFlow analyzers? Are you using in-house developed uh, tools? Uh, is it commercial or open source SNMP-based tools, or deep packet inspection, or something altogether different? So uh, very interested to see how you're going about uh, dealing with this whole DDoS threat uh, currently. So definitely take your vote, and uh, we'll give you another 
10 or 15 seconds to get your vote in, and then we'll show you guys the results. So now that we've seen a little bit about the uh, setting the stage for how threatening it is out there, Rick's going to walk us through some of the solutions uh, that Huawei has to help you with these problems. So, all right, let's go ahead and close out the poll at this point. And we'll share with you the results. And one thing that jumps out at me right now is it's a very balanced, actually. So there's lots of different tools that people are using, both commercial and open source. Uh, still 10% are doing things with in-house tools. Uh, it's a very even balance between uh, the NetFlow and the SNMP-based tools and uh, very similar with deep packet inspection and other. Uh, so that's, that's very interesting, Rick. Um, okay, we'll go ahead and turn it back over to Rick then. Okay, thanks, Nick. So, um, just kind of continuing. So, always anti DDoS solution. You know, we're, we're we're trying to address you know one the high performance and rapid response. Um, so, as I mentioned before, you get large attacks. So, you need to have a high performance solution. And our solution is able to process 200 gigabits of, of processing power, and that's a, that's a, it's a 200 gigabit capacity. Now, what that means is you're able to address the mass. Uh, the, 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 the vast majority of the, the types of DDoS attacks that are out there. It keeps us safe. You're, you, have, you can protect over 100,000 tenants, which is more than any of our competitors, um, and being able to diversify uh, with that protection. And I think part of that, uh, what, why we have such a, a, a broad area of protection in terms of recognizing the various types of different types of attacks and being able to protect so many tenants is I think always very highly global globalized company. You know, we have huge markets overseas in Europe, uh, Middle East, and in Asia. So we've seen, you know, the types of uh, malicious uh, software and various DDoS attacks that are all over the globe, not just based in the U.S. And as we've seen, as the world becomes more globalized, you know, you're going to see threats from outside of your native country and across various borders. Because on the Internet, there, there is no border. So, you know, with that experience, we have the, the, the vast, you know, library of information, being able to rec recognize um, patterns, and having a high-performance solution to give you the really um, the most accurate and what I believe the most well-rounded anti-DDoS solution. It's not, you know, there are there are specific solutions that address certain types of attacks, but as we'll see, and I'll show you in the various slides, is that Huawei solution really addresses the broadest array of the, the various threats. Features, um, service-based defense policy, you know, being able to support continuously, you know, periodically learning and adapt and analyzing the traffic uh, in, in what we call the zone and uh, drawing an outline of normal service traffic, enabling differentiate, different defense types and policies um, based on the service. So based on the service and assigning the various defense policies. You know, as I mentioned with, you know, what we've seen in, in uh, the recent, just very recent attacks on the Bitcoin exchanges is that they're getting smarter and not being able to adapt and recognize the fake transactions from the real transactions and learning quickly on the fly. You know, they weren't able to respond and it caused massive failures and all across the board and, you know, you're talking about millions, if not billions of dollars, you know, going missing because of not knowing, you know, what's going on and not being able to, to adapt. Um, quickly. Uh, second bullet, uh, accurate abnormal traffic cleaning. So, you know, after, after the threat is detected, it's diverted to a, a cleaning center. And, and Huawei uses a per packet detection technology. So analyzing it uh, on a per packet level. And, 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 and we have um, the tools and the technology um, specifically for, for that. Um, defense against various flood attacks, web application attacks, as I mentioned, DNS attacks, uh, SSL DOS and DDoS attacks, as well as um, protocol stack vulnerability attacks. So just a wide array of different forms of attacks and, and how to address each of those on, on, a, on a per packet and per service basis. And then intelligently caching the DNS traffic. So we support DNS cache. This incre uh, improves performance. Uh, during heavy DNS server traffic loads. And of course, uh, our solution includes uh, defense for IPv4 as well as IPv6. So it is IPv6 ready. 
And then flexibility, you know, providing multiple inline, offline deployments. This enables customers to select uh, their, their, their services and, and the networks. So what are the various Huawei anti-DDoS solution components? So the Huawei anti-DDoS solution includes you know, the, the detection center, the cleaning center, and the uh, management center. So the, starting with the management center on the right, so this is the brain of the solution. The management center allows the user to customize detect uh, detection and cleaning policies and deliver the policies to the detecting center and, and cleaning center to control the detecting and cleaning process. So the management center is managing all of this information and sending it to either the detection center or the, uh, the cleaning center, various processes. But you know, at the same time, the user can generate view attack reports from here, all the cleaning records, and really you know, manage the, the, the entire solution. So the detection center, the DDoS, Detection center. Uh, this is the antenna of the entire solution. Detecting center receives detecting policies uh, delivered by the management center, and it identifies and detects the DDoS traffic, and then gives the detecting results back to the management center. Next is the cleaning, the DDoS cleaning center. So this is the uh, the, ex the the executor of the entire solution. The cleaning center cleans the DDoS traffic on the network based on the control signals delivered by the management center and then does a cleaning so that the, the, the bad traffic is being cleaned and then the good traffic is basically sent back to continue the business. Okay, so that's, so those are the various components of the, uh, our anti-DDoS solution. So what we're uh, unveiling today, announcing today actually at the RSA conference, you know, obviously those of you on the phone are not the RSA conference, but if you get, if you're in the San Francisco area and you, ha and you have a chance to go down to the RSA conference at the Moscone Center, we're actually demoing and um, unveiling um, our anti-DDoS solution there. So you can see a full demo. Um, and we're announcing this, the one, one terabit per second processing capability. It's the fastest in the industry. So it comes uh, equipped with the most highly integrated service boards in the industry. It comes with four high-performance multi-core CPUs, and these dedicated boards, what I was talking about earlier, that defends, uh, uh, that, uh, defends against up to 15 million packets per second of DDoS attacks for, for each board. This gives a, you know, unprecedented performance in the industry. We're talking about you know, being able to, with one of these appliances, address a 200 gigabit uh, DDoS attack within an integrated system, uh, and and of course this is scalable to what your needs are. But you know, with with one appliance, you're basically able to defend your your enterprise inter infrastructure against you know, the vast majority of the malicious DDoS attacks that are out there, and with the current capabilities out there, whether they're originating from a data center, overseas, or just a, a, a you know, random attacks or, or, or application layer attacks or, you know, flooding attacks, you know, whatever it is, um, this, this system can pretty much address, you know, the majority of those. So that kind of wraps up, you know, the, the solutions um, at a glance. I think it's time for the third polling question. Okay. Thanks, Rick. That's great. Uh, so what we want to know now is what's the status of your network infrastructure support for IPv6 flow telemetry? Uh, are you fully supporting that today? Is it partial support with uh, some flow telemetry today but not quite all the way there? Uh, do you see this as kind of in the next year you're going to do it? Uh, is it more of a long-term thing or do you have no plans whatsoever? Uh, that's basically what we're trying to find out uh, relative to IPv6. Uh, and while we let you guys respond to that, Rick, great job covering kind of the overview of the Huawei DDoS solution. I think that was great. We do have some questions coming in, uh, and we'll be answering those at the end. But please keep your questions coming. We appreciate it. It makes it more interactive. Uh, it's fantastic. 
Uh, Rick, I know you're probably very eager to see where people are relative to IPv6. So let's go ahead and we will close out the uh, survey now. Give you just a few more seconds if you haven't voted. Weigh in. Be part of the uh, be part of the group here. All right. So let's share the results. And right now, what you can see is some balance. Uh, it, it, it's kind of half of you. It's either a long term or you have no plans whatsoever. Uh, not that many. Only 10% are fully supported, and 13% have partial support, and uh, another 20% over the next year. Uh, so that's interesting. That's uh, interesting data. Um, and with that, uh, Rick, we're going to let you go ahead and go forward. Okay, great. Uh, that's good information. But yeah, you know, everybody you know, is moving towards IPv6. If they haven't done so already, you know, it's going to open, you know, the door to a lot of new threats and new vulnerabilities. So you know, that's and that's kind of the purpose of today's webinar is to address, you know, a lot of those concerns and probably why a lot of you are on this webinar. You know, as I mentioned, you know, Huawei's you know, anti-DDoS solution, you know, protects you against a lot of different attacks. You know, there's hundreds of different types of DDoS attacks, you know, some of the major ones. Um, but, again, one of the key takeaways from this webinar is that Huawei solution is, uh, gives you the ability to defend against 30% more attacks than similar products in the industry because you know, of our experience, you know, being able to defend against, you know, all of those. And I just have, you know, two more slides, but one of them that I just want to, go over as one of our customers, Tencent, because they're such a large organization. They've seen um, a lot of things with, and they have, you know, over 300 million users. And um, so as I mentioned, so this one, oh yeah, so this is, you know, this is what you'd be seeing if you're at the RSA conference. Uh, if you want to see a demo up close, uh, definitely let us know if you have any questions as well, and we can schedule um, some, uh, some kind of follow-up, and then in which case you can kind of demo the product. But if you're at the if you're in San Francisco today at the Moscone Center and the RSA conference, you can you can see that in person. Um, Tencent, if you guys are not familiar with Tencent, this is one of our uh, largest customers, um, particularly in security. Um, Tencent, their product uh, is WeChat. If you're not familiar with WeChat, it's like WhatsApp. WhatsApp is that company that was recently bought by Facebook for 19 billion dollars. Uh, if you haven't if you haven't heard about it, um, so. I, so we, uh, WhatsApp is the number one, you know, messenger app application in the world. I think they have 450 million users. WeChat is number two with over 300 million users. WeChat is actually, you know, for, for those of you who don't know, they actually monetize uh, uh, their their solution better, even though they're second to WhatsApp. And you know, a lot of people were saying WhatsApp was overpriced at 19 billion dollars. WeChat is actually valued at 30 billion dollars, and they're smaller than WhatsApp. So actually, Facebook got a good deal. Anyways, didn't mean to digress, but I just just kind of lay a context for the a context for those who don't who aren't familiar with Tencent and WeChat. So part of the reason why they're able to monetize their solution better is that they have a lot of offerings within their app that allows users to purchase uh, products. So of course that opens up the doorway for hackers and 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 vulnerabilities and trying to you know steal people's money or steal their bitcoins or and and all of that. So. Uh, and they're, and they're a huge customer of ours, and you know they see DDoS attacks, you know, regularly of uh, scales of 40 gigabits or more, including you know various application layer attacks and DNS flood attacks. So they see a lot of that, and they also see a huge array of attacks and new attacks originating from uh, uh, in various countries because they're all over the place. So. You know, and 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 so that's that's one of the, uh, the our case studies that's available. We also have a secure cybersecurity white paper available for download on our website as well, as well as this case study. So if you're interested in that, you know, let us know. Uh, it's another one, another one of our customers. Some text. So oh, my last slide before I turn it over to Nick. So I just want to address so the information about the RSA conference. If you're there, we're at booth 2101 in the South Hall of the Moscone Center. You'll be able to see uh, not only a demo of our, our next generation anti-DDoS solution, but there's also a really great demo of the next generation firewall that we have that allows you to uh, enforce policies, uh, not just for, for, for protecting its DDoS attack, but um, all, all applications. So definitely check that out. And then we have a case study on Alibaba as well. Okay, I think that's those are my that's my presentation for today for today's webinar. Nick, do you, okay. do you want to? Yeah, this? I'll talk a little bit about services. So, you know, a lot of people wonder, 
can Huawei really service my account? And so we just wanted to spend a couple minutes talking about Huawei's services for, uh, ability in the U.S. in particular. Uh, so first of all, we have a four-hour on-site parts and technicians across the USA. Uh, it's basically the same as you're going to find with Cisco, so that's pretty good. Uh, technical help desk is in Pennsylvania, uh, and we also have engineers in our Texas office. And of course, you know, globally we have uh, tech centers in Europe and China as well. Um, we do offer local training and we offer professional services and 24 by 7 global support. So uh, our services team is actually continually conducting certification classes and these aren't the classes for people that just want to learn how to sell Huawei. These are actually the classes for people that are implementing the product and pulling it out of the box, connecting it, configuring it, and, and allowing it to be ready in a production environment. Um, so if you're interested in technical training on Huawei products, uh, we're offering courses regularly uh, and so you can you know, participate in that. Um, also, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, that our customers can rely on Huawei uh, in terms of our services to accelerate their business. And, you know, we have our professional services team is really helping people plan, build, and implement their ICT solutions. Uh, and our goal with that is just so you can accelerate your products to market. And we're trying to give you a competitive advantage by being there for you. So if you want to be the one that's providing the actual services, you can come to our trainings and we'll uh, help you get up to speed to do that. If you want us to deliver the service for you and get the product completely implemented, uh, we certainly have the breadth uh, to deliver that as well. Um, now, customers have the option to either choose Huawei or one of our service partners, you know, based on their technical and service capabilities. And we do have a number of certified partners out there. Um, but we just want to make sure that our partners and our customers will have the confidence in business continuity and high value and attractive returns for their investment in a Huawei product. Um, so that's basically what I wanted to say on the service thing. I also just do want to mention quickly that um, you know we do have 1,200 fields, 1,200 field engineers uh, with four-hour parts and delivery, up to 40,000 U.S. zip codes. Um, so that's an extremely strong network, and uh, you know of both our own staff and our resale partners, uh, who are what we call certified service partners (CSPs), uh, which is the certification that you get when you go through the uh, Huawei certification training. So that's just a little bit of an overview on the services uh, delivery capability, and it is uh, extensive. Um, the next thing I want to talk about briefly is uh, some of the promotions that we're running uh, on the next slide. So I know this particular uh, webinar was really about uh, you know, the DDoS attacks and the solutions that we have around that. Um, Rick, can you advance it up to the next slide? Um, but the next, uh, the next thing I want to mention just quickly is some of the promotions we have. So We've got a very aggressive promotion going on, kind of a competitive switch. We're calling it Switch or Switch to Huawei. Uh, and so our partner base is really rallying around that promotion. Uh, and we strongly recommend you take a look at some of the switching products uh, from a pricing perspective. You're never going to find a better deal than Q1. Uh, and it is across our entire switching portfolio from the top of rack to the campus switches, data center switches, uh, branch, you know, everything, core access, aggregation, the entire family is involved in the switching portfolio. Um, we also have an application accelerator card called our TCAL ES3000. Uh, this is a PCIe card that uh, plugs into servers and it's really used for very high performance, low latency requirements used with a lot of database applications. Uh, the card that we have on special is a 1.2 terabit, uh, terabyte application accelerator. Uh, so this is definitely a card that uh, is very popular and we have aggressive pricing on that. Um, in the storage area, we have our S2600T, which is our unified storage solution. We're actually offering 36 terabytes of storage, uh, which includes one controller and two expansion units. Uh, and that is another product that is aggressively promoted right now in Q1. Uh, and then finally, I talked a little bit about our UCNC area of our business, but one of the products that's extremely hot uh, is our TE30. This is an uh, all-in-one video conferencing unit that uh, you can set up in between five and ten minutes out of the box. I think Rick, uh, his record was five minutes. It probably takes someone like me closer to ten minutes. But this thing has built-in speaker, camera, it's wireless connection. Uh, just a real easy way to set up high-definition video conferencing uh, for multiple sites. And we did a, a webinar on that just uh, a couple weeks ago. So uh, these are all the products that we really are highlighting this quarter and that we have aggressive promotions. So if you're a partner, uh, you know, come and engage on our website and, and check out the uh, partner uh, incentives that we have for selling these products. And if you're a customer, uh, go to your partner and you'll find some incredibly good pricing on this at the moment. 
So that's a, a, an overview on that. Um, what I'd like to do now uh, is go ahead and uh, take questions. So uh, basically now we're going to show you what our contact details are. So uh, there are a couple different Huawei websites out there, but the Huawei Enterprise website in the U.S. is this URL, HuaweiEnterpriseUSA.com. Go to that site. Uh, it has a special section for our partners uh, where they can get information about price lists and deal registration and that kind of thing. Uh, but most of the site is just open to anyone uh, where you can download product information, you can see specific information about our solutions, you can listen to recorded webinars that we've done in the past. Um, if you dial this phone number, 855-472-9656, this is a direct connection to our inside sales team. Uh, so if you want to get access to information uh, or if you want to talk to somebody about an opportunity uh, or about uh, specific products, that's the number to call and they'll be able to navigate you to the right person. Uh, and then if you just want to send us an email, Huawei info at Huawei.com also goes into our inside sales team and they'll be able to answer your questions or navigate to someone who can. Um, so that's just a bit of an overview there. So let's go ahead and uh, take some questions. Um, Rick, the first question I think is for you. Uh, and I know you mentioned a little bit about Huawei's anti-DDoS solution, but the question is, can you talk just a little bit more about the detection center, the cleaning center, and the management center? I think they just want you to kind of remind them which of these components does uh, the various activities. So can you just review that again real quick? So the management center is, is really where you manage everything from getting the analysis and setting your policies and, and, and rules and it tells, you know, the detection center and, and, and controls the detection center and the cleaning center. The detection center looks at the traffic and then based on the traffic and, and, and is able to respond, you know, as I mentioned, if it's an, is it an application attack, is it a, 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 a DNS attack, what is it? or is it something different we haven't seen before, but it's able to adapt and recognize suspicious behavior. And I keep kind of bringing up like some of the reason why it's because they are getting smarter. So management center, you set all the policies, get all the reports, and gives you the view and the visibility. The detection center is able to uh, intelligently analyze traffic and detect and monitor any kind of suspicious activity and then reroute the traffic if it's even, before it even knows if it's you know, bad or, or, or good or not. And, and then it sends to the cleaning center. The cleaning center takes a deep dive, looks at it, cleans the bad traffic, removes it. If it finds out it's good traffic, sends it back, uh, sends send it back down the pipe. And then all of that information goes back to the management center, which is really the brain. And then from there, you can view all your reports, logs, manage everything in real time. Excellent. Okay, that's great. Um, the next question says, can you talk about the growth of the security and enterprise business in the U.S. and worldwide? Uh, and specifically, they're just wondering how big a global market is this? Um, so, Rick, I'll go ahead and answer that one. Uh, first thing to say is that the security infrastructure market really consists of the software, the services, and the network security appliances uh, that are used to secure enterprise and consumer IT equipment. So that's kind of setting the stage for what this market is. And so according to Gartner, uh, the worldwide spending on security is expected to rise to $60 billion, uh, and that's going that's a 2012 number, uh, which was an 8.4% increase, uh, which was $55 billion in 2011, uh, and they expect this trajectory to continue uh, with the forecast of $86 billion market by 2016. So obviously this is a massive market. Everybody is aware of the threat and concerned about the implications of outages, uh, and Rick talked a lot about some of the high-profile ones, uh, but this is a massive market and uh, certainly a place that if you're a reseller, you want to be involved in selling products, and if you're a, uh, a business that needs to be protected from this stuff, uh, you need to be taking a close look at it. Um, Rick, the next question is talking a little bit about interoperability. So the question is, uh, does the Huawei DDoS solution work with other vendors' infrastructure from a networking perspective? Uh, so can you just talk a little bit about Huawei's kind of interoperability play relative to other vendors, whether it be Cisco, HP, or others? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Huawei is a, is a firm believer in open standards. In fact, you know, we've, we've led the, the charge for open standards. Um, you know, we, we sit on several consortiums promoting, you know, open standards. So everything we do is built on a philosophy of, you know, we're not the only vendor in anybody's environment, you know, we don't we don't try to be the only vendor or, or, or believe that we are the only vendor. So, you know, we want to play well with all of the other vendors, and we understand that, you know, a lot of that is it has to work, you know, uh, with existing technology that you have in your infrastructure. 
And part of that, you know, proof of concept we've done recently is is that at the Interop uh, Interop show, they have an interoperability center that the the Interop Net knock. And there, you know, the, the, the sole purpose is to make sure that your technology works in an environment is very diverse with other appliances, other brands, and manufacturers. So we've, we've done that year over year, and we continue to do that um, with, you know, by just by proving it out at our customers. So um, with the open standards and, and, and even with um, the, the, this solution today, it's not designed to only work with other Huawei products. It's designed designed to work with other products in your infrastructure. Great, great answer. Um, another question is, uh, how does Huawei test its own products? And uh, I'll go ahead and take a crack at that one if I can, uh, Rick, and you can kind of fill in and uh, you know, correct me if I, if I stray off a little bit. But you know, Huawei spends a tremendous amount of money and resource uh, working with independent third-party evaluation agencies and evaluators. I mean, our goal is really to get an unbiased security evaluation of our products. Um, you know, most of the time, the evaluation is carried out by customers and third-party auditors, uh, including the common criteria uh, and security certification model. Uh, we've gained CC certificates for multiple products, and some of the carriers want to conduct their own internal security testing on products uh, as they continue to develop more secure environments. Uh, and then we have other customers uh, who invite third-party test products you know, independently, uh, such as our customers in North America and Europe. Um, Rick referred to a white paper, and, and I want to let you guys know about that. It's not up on our website now, but it will be uh, hopefully by tomorrow. Um, this is a paper that just came out in October of last year. Uh, it's titled Cybersecurity Perspectives, and it's written by uh, John Suffold, uh, who's the Senior VP and Global Cybersecurity Officer for Huawei. So this is a, a very thorough white paper, definitely something you might want to take a look at. It talks about not only our own company's perspectives on cybersecurity, but also how we build it into our products. Um, you know, we really want to ensure that one lab's review receives additional verification uh, and a different review. And, and Huawei has this kind of internal mantra that says, many eyes, many hands, and many checks. And we believe that's the key to really successful uh, protection from a cybersecurity perspective. Um, our internal cybersecurity lab is set up to allow customers or third parties uh, to perform their own testing. So these guys can come into our facility and they can do their own testing in our facility. Um, and we have our, you know, with our internal current lab, we've implemented a private and secure environments that can support uh, simultaneous evaluations from customers or from third party uh, subject matter experts. experts. Um, so we allow these people to come in and leverage our platform to carry out their own independent security evaluations. Uh, and I think that's really important. Um, customers can also use a third-party lab. So they don't have to use our lab uh, if they want to use a third-party lab completely independent of Huawei and have their own tools and technologies uh, and approaches that we know nothing about. You know, we welcome all of this. Uh, I think Huawei you know, has a, a big uh, investment in making sure that our products do provide the necessary security. Uh, and so this is something that we welcome. And I just want to make sure it's clear to everyone that we have a significant investment in our own security lab. And, and we certainly welcome uh, people to use their own uh, or any combination they're in. Um, all right. Well, Rick, I think we're kind of coming down to the end. I don't know that there's any other uh, questions that I can see. So I think we're kind of at the end here. Did you have any other uh, final comments or any other questions that you saw that you wanted to answer? Um, no, just uh, just that you know we're at, we're at the RSA conference this week. Uh, if you have if you have any other questions for me, feel free. Um, to call us or email us that uh, information that I had up on the screen there. If you want to schedule a demo, you know, let us know. And um, yeah, feel definitely reach out. Yeah, actually, okay. one more question just came in, and it touched on what you just said, and that was, how can I see a demo of these products? So, Rick mentioned, if you happen to be in the Bay Area, uh, definitely come and see us at the RSA show. If you're not in the Bay Area, uh, we do have multiple offices around the country. We have a big executive briefing center in Plano, Texas. We also have a briefing center in Cupertino, California, uh, and we can do these uh, you know, over WebEx as well. Uh, so absolutely any product that you want to see demoed, uh, let us know, and we'll help you connect with that. Um, there's lots of other places you can see us face-to-face -face as well. We're going to be at Spring Interop, uh, which is in a couple of months. We're going to be at Exchange, which is a partner show down in Los Angeles next week. Uh, we'll also be at the at NAB show in Las Vegas. Um, so any of the big trade shows, Huawei has a presence. We'd love to come and chat with you, show you our solutions uh, firsthand, 
Uh, so if you're at any, any of these kind of trade shows, definitely try to take some time and come by and see us. We'd love to meet you and hear your perspectives. Um, so with that, Rick, I really want to thank you for uh, taking the time to deliver this, and thanks to everyone in the audience. Uh, remember, we will be sending out the Starbucks gift cards here shortly, uh, so thank you for that, and be on the lookout for another web webinar uh, in the very near future from Huawei.